During your 6 o'clock news hour here on WOEY, Chief Meteorologist Chad Merrill and Newswatch forecaster Brain Petri interviewed a survivor of the historic flooding on July 8, 2001. Those flood waters wreaked havoc in many Riverside communities like Mullins. Well, Chief Meteorologist Chad Merrill takes a moment to describe how those floods formed 23 years ago. Well, folks, you just heard from Mr. Price about his experience during the Mullins flooding back in 2001. A devastating day for those who live in the town. This is the radar loop from that particular day. We start out with the first frame showing showers and thunderstorms across southern West Virginia. But as we play this loop, notice what happens. We, of course, have some missing frames here, but you get these showers and storms that are repeated across the same location, and Mullins is right in that line of fire. So we continue to play the loop. There's the showers and storms, the date and the timeline, as you can see, July 8, 2001. What we saw here was a training effect of showers and storms forming over the same spot. That repeated rain often results in flash flooding across any particular location. It just happened to be over Mullins, and these are the severe thunderstorm wash boxes that were in effect. Now, let's go and see the significance of the flooding. Summer of 2001 was Beckley's 13th wettest on record. July 2001 is still ranked as the wettest July on record in Beckley with 9.65 inches of rain. Beckley is the nearest airport observation that keeps records close to Mullins. July 8, 2001 still has the daily rainfall record of 2.64 inches of rain. This is the surface map from the day of the Mullins flooding. We had a stationary front just to the north and a high pressure to the south. The high pressure was bringing the warmth and the high dew points and the front was the impetus for showers and thunderstorms. The upper level flow shows a high pressure centered here across the nation's midsection. On the periphery of that high, we had winds coming out of the northwest aloft. That helped to generate the train of showers and thunderstorms that moved over Mullins. And look at the rainfall totals from across the U.S. on that day. That stripe of real estate from Iowa down to Illinois into southern West Virginia had the heaviest axis of rain. So if, when you are in that area that has the training, you typically have the heaviest amount of rain. Now, this is a graph showing the precipitable water amounts during the average part of the year. So what we're seeing is a spike here in our graph right around July 8th. Notice how that coincides with the peak when we typically have the most moisture in the atmosphere. That is the later part of July. So the stationary front lined up with the peak period of atmospheric moisture that we traditionally have across the region. And that's one of the reasons why we had so much rain and such a short period of time. So we are entering that period where we get those heavy downpours that can produce flash flooding. Now the common denominator to this summer from 2001, the Pacific Decado Oscillation was negative and it has been for a while across the Pacific. The other common denominator, we were in a neutral phase of ENSA. We were not in El Nino or La Nina time. We were transitioning to an El Nino. At this time, we are transitioning from a super El Nino into a La Nina, but it's still a neutral period. In other words, the sea surface temperature anomalies are cooling, but right now we're in that neutral phase. So what this means is we could easily have a repeat of the Mullins flooding anywhere in southern West Virginia. So when it comes to flooding, move to higher ground. Do not attempt to drive across the flooded road. One foot of water will float vehicles. Two feet of running water can carry an SUV and do not drive through a barricade. That is the latest with the Mullen flooding. We will continue to keep you abreast of any flooding that develops in our region going forward through the rest of the summer. Chief Meteorologist Chad Merrill for Newswatch.